Hey, it's Ian Hart here with Jeffrey Allen, and we're here for the Healing Mastery Summit. So thank you very much, Jeffrey, for coming along and, and joining us here. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. So um, allow me to introduce you, Jeffrey, and, and uh, you know, you have an extensive background. You've been in the industry or you've been healing people for about 20 years, correct? And yeah. uh, you're now a Mind Valley author. And for those that don't know, Mind Valley has millions of subscribers. So when uh, Jeffrey says he's taught thousands of people, he's now reaching millions of people across the globe, which is pretty awesome. And uh, what he does is teaches people how to harness the power of their own energy and awareness and improve their relationships, deepen their spiritual connections, and increase their personal presence, happiness, and impact on the world. And that's awesome because that's what this summit is all about. And so we're really grateful to have you here. And uh, your mission is to make energy healing and higher awareness available to everyone uh, so we can unburden ourselves from needless conflict and pain, embrace happiness, fulfill lives of true passion, purpose, and meaning. Awesome. So welcome. Oh, thanks. That was great. Great introduction. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so really... Um, there's so much to talk about here, and uh, so let's just get a little background of you. And one of, one of the questions before we go into everything is, uh, before I ask you about your background, is what would you say your definition of healing is? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. So for me, um, I'm thinking from an energy perspective more than a, you know, kind of a doctor or physical body perspective. So for me, uh, energy healing is about returning things natural flow so uh, if you if you think about it in terms of um, you know the body if you've got pain in the body or something that's uh, bothering you or not functioning well it's because the energy is not flowing in its natural way right. so it could uh, you know, it could be a energetic block a physical block some kind of damage and there's some reason why the energy is not flowing right. in the most beautiful graceful way and so for me energy healing is is just that it's it's you know, doing something that will help the energy flow naturally again. Because um, not just in the body, but in general, uh, things tend to get better. Like we're programmed, our body is programmed to heal itself. Our life does the same thing. If all your energy is flowing well, your relationship challenges will naturally sort of get better and better and better and heal themselves. Mm. So if, if that relationship is a natural path for you, if it's a path that's, when it's going to continue to create um, a disharmony naturally, then energy healing will tend to help you separate that relationship and move apart. So it's a little funny because for me, healing is not about the, it's not about the result. It's about, are you flowing in a natural and balanced way? You know, sometimes we get attached to like, you know, I want a particular result. And so I'm going to try to you know, do something to make that happen. And uh, that's great. If the, that result is in the, Kind of in the flow for you yeah. but if it's not then uh, we can spend a lot of time really um, a lot of time and effort trying to do something that's unnatural and uh, that, that doesn't in my experience anyway that doesn't tend to make me happy <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, make a that's a good question for you would be okay so since we have like say homeostasis the body's always trying to get to homeostasis yeah. say people are born as their true being and then some event uh, causes them to now have a, a, a ego that brings out a different part of them, which is not, let's say, not their true being. So essentially, right. we're just bringing them back or that person back to their true self. Is that a, a good way of saying it almost? That's a good way to say it. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, we have to consider too that we're always growing. You know, the, we, the reason, you know, one of the things that's beautiful about being here and, and being alive is that we can grow and learn. And we do that through a challenge a lot of times. So something comes up that we, we don't understand or that we're struggling with, and then we learn to see it from a different perspective or you know, kind of uh, find how it's helping us or, or maybe even just learn how to separate from something that's you know, not in our path. So we're always learning and growing. And so that because of that, you know, it's, life is always going to challenge us, right? We're not just going to be like centered, perfect. <laughs> that's <laughs> what some people think, right? <laughs> this is not real. That's not going to happen for anybody. I'm sorry to tell you guys. <laughs> but, but you can enjoy the process along the way of, you know, of the growth, the, the downs, the ups. Uh, and then you tend to enjoy it a lot more if you're, if you're flowing, 
You know, it's when we get stuck, even if we're stuck in success, you know, if we get stuck in our energy, that's when we get, that's when we get frustrated. Yeah, now, uh, so that's a good way of putting it. So um, in terms of energy, sometimes I think of words that are used. And so acceptance and surrender a lot of times are words that come up to me. Are those yeah. terms that you use when, it, when you talk about energy? Uh, sure, yeah. It's, um, I, I tend to talk in terms of um, kind of what it looks like energetically, but it's the same concept. So like I would say to my students, if they're learning to uh, sense energy, then you have to be open to all possibilities. Hmm. Well, you have to, I say like neutral. So you have to have a certain ah. neutrality toward the situation, meaning that if, if I want to tune in and kind of feel for myself, mm -hmm. you know, that answer this particular question I have, if I'm not open to half the answers, you know, then that, half the time I'm not going to hear an answer. <laughs> this is math right there. <laughs> so, you have, so that's kind of the acceptance part. Like I'm accepting all things that could happen, whether I like them or not, right. or possibly. And so when you have that, suddenly, oh, now you can see the world clearly. Yeah. You can see the world clearly. Then if something's coming at you that you don't, or you're going towards something that you don't want to happen, well, now you can steer around it, you know, because your eyes were open. Right. So, you know, acceptance is really, uh, really powerful. Yeah. Awesome. So now let's, uh, let's just talk a little bit about how you got into this. Um, most of the time people get into healing because they've had like some trauma or some health issue or something like that. So I, I couldn't really find much about exactly how you got into healing. So I'd love to hear a little bit about your story. Sure, you bet. You bet, too. Uh, I would also say that um, when you ask about healing, one thing that popped in is that, that the term energy healing might be a little misleading for people because it's, kind of it's kind of an overstatement in some ways and an understatement as well. Because mm -hmm. right? when, when I think healing, I think it's natural for people to think, I've got some symptom or problem and I'm going to magically make it go away. Right? So I'm going like, to snap my fingers and do something and like, or I'm going to you know, work with the energy or the chakras or something and this is going to magically fix this problem. Mm -hmm. That's what people think it's healing is like, uh, getting the result I want through manipulating energy, <laughs> right? But, um, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, like I said, you're kind of returning things to flow, uh, whichever direction it might be. And, um, and it's not just about the body, you know? So you might be using energy to just feel more clear in your mind, or you might have a dream of something that you're wanting to manifest in the world. And you want to know, how do I, you know, I'm struggling to get that dream to be a real thing. So, oh, okay, so we could use energy work for that. Sometimes I just say energy work instead of energy healing, right? Yeah. It, so, so it's kind of a, it's kind of an overstatement in the way that you might think it's going to fix all your problems. And it's an understatement in the sense that it, healing tends to make people think in terms of the body. And energy works really much, uh, much, much broader than that. Right. Yeah, and the reason I say that is when, you know, when you ask um you know, how did I get into energy healing? So for me, I started, uh, my background is actually math and science. So I've got a, a two degrees, one in computer science, one in mathematics. And oh, wow. when, I was, when I was studying um, in college, I was dating somebody that had kind of natural intuitive experiences mm -hmm. and energy type experiences. And I had no experience with that at all. Like I was thinking like some math and science, right? <laughs> But because I was oh, hanging out with political left brain, right, kind of thing. I'm still very left brain. And um, I, but I was hanging out with her. I started having these experiences that I couldn't explain. Uh, I was like, this is crazy. Like, what is happening? And so I kind of had, it's funny because the, the scientist in me said, okay, I've got two choices here. I've got some data that doesn't fit my understanding of the world. Mm. And so I got it. I can like... Uh, you know, one of those is wrong. Either my understanding of the world is wrong or my, or my data is wrong. Right. These are experiences I actually had. So I can't really say they're not there. So I had to conclude that, you know, I don't understand the world completely. There's a whole kind of area of stuff that I had never considered or discounted, but I'm having experiences that indicate that there's something there. Can you so that's why I feel like, like do you recall like one specific experience that has <laughs> Yeah, you want a good example, yeah. So yeah, I'll give you kind of a fun one. So All right. this is blew my mind. So, um, so I'm sleeping with my girlfriend and, uh, and I'm having this dream 
And in the dream, um, you know how um, sometimes your body kind of shakes and stuff when you're sleeping, right? Yeah. So I don't remember what the dream was about, um, but I did that. My body kind of, you know, did this jerk. And then, um, and then my dream just, it was like these curtains parted and went, and the scene changed. It was my girlfriend right there, and she's like, are you okay? And I said, yeah, yeah, just my body was jerking. And then I said, wait a minute, why, why didn't you just say something to me out loud? She said, well, you were dreaming. I thought it'd be easier to just go where you were. And then, and then it goes like and closes, and the dream picks back up. And I was like, wait a minute. So I like open my eyes, <laughs> and I look over at her. And, uh, and the same thing, I asked her again. And she's like, yeah, it was just easier to go where you were. Wow. And I was like, I don't understand what happened there. Because I was dreaming, which is some sort of just mental stories. And, right. But we had a shared experience outside the physical, normal kind of reality. So that was just one of like many, right? <laughs> but it was things like that where like, I don't know what to do with that experience. Yeah. Um, but I'm having enough of them that, uh, you know, either I'm going crazy or I'm onto something. So I wanted to find out, you know, so that's why I started studying and studying and um, that's what really so got some me. Some people actually just go into denial, right? I mean. Some people go into what? Denial, like you were open to these things and you kept exploring it. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so like I said, you've got to kind of decide which one's insane, like your, your experiences or your beliefs. Yeah. Right? Letting go of your beliefs is very, very hard for people. Yeah. Even though people's beliefs are completely nonsensical for the most part. <laughs> like, people ask me that a lot. And they, if they ask about, um, you know, like, uh, if, they're, if they're really skeptical, I always say, yeah, skepticism is great. You should definitely base your beliefs on experiences you've had, like tangible, real experiences that you can verify. And then when they're nodding their head, I say, do you do that? <laughs> are, your are your beliefs that you have now based on your actual experiences. Yeah. Most people are like, you know, they'll say yes, but if you, if you poke a little bit deeper, it's like, well, what was your experience behind that belief and that belief and that belief? And you're like, well, my experience was I read a book or I listened to somebody or my parents told me, they told me in school. And I'm like, those aren't experiences. Totally. That's, that's hearsay. Yep. That's, it's, it's not invaluable, but like, there's, there's value in that, but it's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I love that. I love that. Yeah. Awesome. So that, that's, that's really powerful. So you just kept going further and further with it and what, it just took you down this path? Oh, and yes. Where yeah, so, so for a long time, this was kind of just my side thing, right? You know, I had a, I was working for the, for the government actually, for the Department of Energy, which is, which is kind of funny. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I had my computer science uh, career. So for 15 years, I did that. I was writing software and, and this was just kind of a side interest. But it kept getting bigger and bigger. I trained more and more. I was on the board of directors for an uh, intuitive uh, training school. I was, I could start kind of taking over. Mm. And at some point, I just realized, I think this is more fun. I think I can help more people mm. I'll dive in deeper and start teaching more about what I've learned. Yeah. I'm not really, you know, I love software. I love writing programs. But I'm not sure I was really helping a whole lot of people and making a big difference in the world. I was, I was making money. You know, which is nice. But, um, but this, now I'm now I'm helping people, right? That's just a, it's just a huge difference for me. And that was uh, 2005 when I made that change. Wow. Okay. So you've been full time 15 years, but you were doing it for like how long? Like 10 years before that? I really got deep. I got serious when I enrolled in a, a school, in an intuition school, and I did that in uh, 1997. Yeah, so about 20 years ago. Awesome. Yeah. Too, yeah yeah so so basically um it, can you explain because there's a there's you know you talk about energy healing and then also awareness which mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times i equate our personal awareness with like if someone wants to call that spirituality or connected with your higher self or something like that is that what you teach people um in that realm of things yeah that and and more so um Awareness, I definitely get the higher awareness of, you know, like you mentioned, this part of you that is not quite as burdened or, um, uh, you know, stuck in just the material world. So there's this part of you that's, that's bigger than that. Right. So we call it spirit or higher self or soul or, right. you know, you can use all kinds of the words. Yeah. And, uh, 
and they're all great. You know, uh, so you know, what I've seen from studying different um, uh, different uh, spiritual paths and different religions and so on is that uh, pretty much everybody's talking about the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, the termolo- terminology may differ, and the stories. Everybody has some additional stories that aren't that are just beliefs. You know, it's just like some description that somebody made up. So every belief system also has a lot of those. But if you strip them all away and just say, what are they actually talking about? It's pretty much always the same stuff. Right. Uh, so, so that's one part of awareness is this, uh, you know, this uh, higher you, you know, you can call it, uh, or connecting with God. You know? Right. And, um, but there's more too. There's also awareness of, you know, this experience of being in a body is so, so cool, right? There's just so many things you can do yeah. that we don't learn because we don't practice. We sort of, Grow up practicing to use our brain and be little uh, like kind of uh, worker robots, you know. Mm-hmm. And but if you if you start to stretch yourself, you've got all kinds of abilities you don't know you have. Like you can feel other people's emotions, yeah. not like in the abstract, but actually feel that. It's possible to, with some practice to be able to tune in and, and notice like what's going to happen in the near future, or get information that's not available to you through your eyes and ears and thinking so there's all this stuff all this awareness that's available but we don't really um we're just not taught it it's not part of our, our modern culture our modern culture is like you know right, you know take that down you know, that in, yeah yeah they don't teach it in the education system they're not like teaching you like self-awareness and energy well, I, yeah you're right and I, I think the reason is that there's um you know the in the U.S. anyway, people are pretty excited about the, about Christianity, and, and that's great. I have no, no problems with any religions, actually. Um, but sometimes when kind of um, defending our belief system, we like to say everything that I didn't hear from this place is wrong or bad or evil. or you know. And so uh, that's a pretty, it's really hard to grow and expand yourself from that perspective. I think, I think a healthier thing to do is say, hey, I love my beliefs, I love my spirituality, my religion, or my lack of religion, or whatever, whatever you have, and say, I really love that, and I can probably learn something from everybody. I can probably have got some information that I don't have, or some in- insight, or, you know, and when you have that openness, suddenly uh, the world's a lot more fun. And that's but the neutrality you were talking about. Right. Uh-huh. That's the neutrality you were talking about, which is like nothing oh. right or wrong, and you're kind of open to yeah experiences. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of a kind of an external version of neutrality. Like, oh, I'm not going to get lit up by the world if, if somebody doesn't uh, match my beliefs. Like, that's okay. In fact, that's uh, that's inevitable. There, there's nobody else that believes exactly what I believe. <laughs> so, so why would I try to like make the world believe what I believe? That doesn't even uh, that's like an impossible. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, um, so now, what? So you started to have these experiences. You got into energy healing. Did you realize that this was uh, this was meant to be? Like you met this girl so she could spark this kind of natural, intuitive thing that you had going. Because um, from what I've what I've encountered is that there's people that are like kind of destined for this work. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so is that your feeling behind this? Like you were supposed to be having these experiences and she came into your life and kind of sparked that or? Yeah, there's definitely, so the way I believe things work is that, um, you know, before we're born, we do a little kind of a pencil outline of the things you know, that we want to see happen. So it's not, um, there's some planning involved in our lives. It's not just, um, you know, show up and uh, just roll the dice. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is what I believe to be true. And from my, um, my experiences, you know, back, back that up. Uh, but I've had some pretty unusual experiences. So. Uh, so, so, yeah, for me, when I look at the, you know, what was, what I kind of laid down, what the highest opportunities or most fun paths for me definitely included both. It included um, waking up that intuitive side and that healing side and that, you know, kind of mediumship side, waking all that stuff up, because everybody has those abilities, and then, but not turning off my rational mind, mm-hmm. and then trying to, like, can I do these both? Can I be like a rational, like, uh, you know, mathematician, scientist, kind of a computer guy, and like do 
intuition and energy healing and uh, channeling and like can i do those would those fit together and um and for me it's super fun because uh, most people would say no those are those are like uh you know don't fit they fit beautifully yeah so i would say that's that was one of the questions i had is they actually do complement each other in, in certain ways because everything is math like life is math and so people will see signs or whatever you want to call them in terms of math right have you noticed certain things like this sure yeah yeah people uh um yeah if you, if you understand math and even logic a little more deeply than uh than average um you can see even more of that you see things happening it's um that aren't uh you know, aren't like, uh, there must be, they're not just a coincidence. The probability is so low that you're like, okay, that's if you like me winning the lottery every day for a month. It's probably not going to happen uh, statistically. So something else is happening there. This isn't random chance. Um, but also the, the thing that's kind of fun about logic is most people don't have a very good um, logical mind. <laughs> and I, I say that because, you know, I, I'm probably guilty of it at times too, but mostly we compare what we learn and feel against what we believe to be true and then we try to kind of um uh filter out the stuff that didn't fit very well and then a lot of people use is is not logic it's um it's uh, illogic so so just the, just having a basis in uh in logical training and mathematics helps me see when i'm doing it and then helps me have compassion when i see other people doing it but and knowing like uh, you don't take what they're saying seriously right yeah <laughs> that helps i'm sure yeah, yeah it helps it helps kind of sort through the noise so yeah so you have about i've seen some videos where you have about four techniques or something four things that you kind of teach people can you explain a little bit about those techniques or what how you help people kind of connect with themselves in a way Okay, okay. So which, uh, which four? There could be many things. What, uh, well, let's say the energy side. Maybe, you know, maybe you can, you can give an example of that somehow. Okay, sure. Yeah, so uh, something that people can do, right? Yeah, that would be okay. great. So let's, yeah, let's kind of get everybody pulled in here. So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, right, okay, so I, I teach about um, intuition, and I teach about uh, energy healing, and I teach uh, about mediumship, which is kind of a, love to define that, talk more about it. And then I talk about just awareness in general. Mm. And um, if we look at um, intuition, now, oh, and by the way, everybody has all of these. Like if, if you're alive and you're in a body, you are intuitive. You are an energy healer. You are an idiom. You have awareness. Like there is not a person alive that doesn't have these things, whether you've trained in it or not. So, and so you can access it without any training because it's already inside you, just like walking or breathing or anything else. You don't need to go to school. You don't need a degree. Uh, you don't need a certificate that says you can do it. And, and really, you don't even need any teaching. What you need is practice. I love right? it. Practice your abilities. All right. Just like, um, you know, like if you wanted to learn basketball, uh, would it help to get a basketball degree? Would it help to like, you know, read a, you know, get a coach? Sure, but if you don't practice, <laughs> none of those things don't matter. And if you don't have a coach, you don't go to school, and you don't do anything but practice, you're still going to get great. So that's what I suggest for these tools: is just just practice them. And so for um, probably the best place to start is since this is about energy healing, would be that one. So let's do a little bit of with energy healing. Yeah. So um, so you can you can do it too. And as we're going to be kind of fun, you can tell me what you feel. So uh, the easiest way to feel energy is is with your hands. Most people can do this. Uh, I've, I've been I've tied the energy healing to people all around the world, all different cultures, and uh, everybody's kind of uh, same at this level. So what you want to do is just um, just kind of stretch your hands a little bit, kind of swing it nice and relaxed, and be a little warmed up. And then you're going to just face your hands toward each other like this, and just imagine that you're you're going to create a ball of energy, or you're going to let a ball of energy collect between your hands. You don't actually have to do anything. You're just going to see what happens. And, and when I'm doing, my hands are kind of pulsing a little bit back and forth. That's not intentional. That's just kind of uh, because I'm, I've done this a lot, so I can, the energy is pulsing, so my hands are just moving naturally. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may take a little while, so you might, if you're not feeling anything, maybe put them a little closer, a little bit further. 
and you're just imagining, I'd say in a fantastic word, just imagining like, okay, there's a ball of energy that's building up between my hands. And then just notice what you feel. Okay, so what, what, are you, what are you feeling? Are you feeling anything there? I mean, yeah, I feel the energy in, intensely in my hands. Okay, what, what, what does it, what's the sensation? Uh, the sensation would be uh, excitement. Uh -huh. And um, I don't know, it's like a weird feeling to describe in my fingertips, really. It's like they're floating almost. Nice, like, nice. Ele like electric, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so when I, when I ask people, I never tell people what to feel. I just ask what you feel. And they said everybody all around the world says the same thing. So, uh, and those, the common ones are, you said like a little tingling or electricity. Yeah. So a lot of people feel that. Um, some people feel it as pressure. Okay. Like for me, it feels, like I'm, it feels like I'm pushing on like a little invisible balloon. Right. If I get closer, I can feel all oh, the pressure is building up. And if I move it apart, it's releasing. So there's like pressure there. Everybody feels differently, but it's usually one of these things. Some people feel heat. Uh, so, uh, some people actually feel cold instead of heat. So that's been interesting. Yeah. And then, um, and then some people feel uh, motion, both like uh, internal, like a, like an emotion, or or they feel like uh, like there's just some kind of flow or something happening. Yeah, I feel it in my head actually. Yeah. Where I need healing when I do these type of things. Yeah, and that's perfect. So that's the next question. So everybody right now, just think, okay, where, is there somewhere in my body that wants this energy? Like, could I use a little help somewhere? Yeah. You don't need any training to be an energy healer. You already are. Yeah. So if it's, if it's your head, like, see, for me, when I tune in, you know, my, I kind of need it. I kind of want it down around my, like, uh, my pelvis and my lower back. So, so just take this ball of energy that built up there and you're just going to put your hands wherever it was you felt like you needed it. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, kind of move in a way that the ball energy goes with your hands and then just, just see what happens. Like, I'm just inviting that ball to go into, oh, there we go, into my lower back. Mm. So maybe learning something new is just to get authentic experience. Uh, yeah. You know, did it feel like energy just like nothing happened or went away? Did it no, I, I mean, I can feel it intensely actually. Like where I had some crazy trauma to my brain in terms of like inflammation and all this stuff happened. So it's been, for me, it's been a long healing process. So when I do this type of stuff, I can actually feel the cells like mm -hmm. vibrate. And so as soon as I do this, I start to feel it in my head. And then when I go like that, I literally can feel the cells like zzz, yeah. So, um, and this was my experience of learning the energy. Like, no one could tell me I could feel it from far away. I could feel food. I could feel all these different things. So, um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I felt it powerfully just by doing that simple technique. Great, great. And most people, if you're listening, um, and whatever experience you had is the important one. So, you have to be really... Um, kind of mindful not to compare yourself to other people when you're learning about energy. Mm. Because, um, our physical senses are all very similar. Like if you, if you put your hand on something and it's cold, and then the person next to you puts your hand on it, it'll be cold for them too. So the, the physical reality is, is much more um, you know, concrete in that way. Mm. But energy is um, it's so dependent on you and what's happening inside you. Mm. So, you know, you could... You know, for like you said, when you put the energy and you can actually feel it in the cells, you're like, wow, this is really affecting me on a tangible, you know, level there. Um, but if, if somebody is, did this exact same thing, put it in their head, if you didn't feel that, if you felt like a little foggy instead, like, oh, wow, now I just feel spaced out, that's okay. That doesn't mean you did it wrong. What that means is, oh, what the energy did for you is it helped release some unconscious energy. Mm. So what you needed, it would be difficult, but what you needed in that moment was to move some of this unconscious energy that was, uh, you know, in the way of your natural flow. Right. So when you move that, when you put it in, that unconscious energy moved, you felt a little unconscious. And you're like, whoa, you know, I'm feeling kind of space here. And, you know, I don't know what happened. And that's great. That's success, right? Whatever experience you had is success. 
Yeah. Uh, but that's a little hard for people to grasp. People want to be like the like star healer, intuitive, uh, you know, whatever. Right. So it's really important when you're learning to go with your experience. Yeah, so um, we're electrical beings, right? So would you say we're charging up the electricity in our body by feeding into this energy and then like feeding the electricity of our cells when we're doing something like this? Is that, is that a way you could explain it? Uh, well, I would say that that's, uh, that's probably a result of what we're doing. Okay. So what we're actually doing is working on a, a little bit deeper level. We're working with, um, it's hard to describe, we're working with the geometry mm -hmm. of, of time and space. We're kind of working on a quantum level. Okay. So uh, and when you work on that level, that, that opens the door for lots of things to happen. Mm. So like, cause when I look at it visually, you know, cause uh, with some practice, you can learn to, to visualize energy and see energy. Yeah. You know, Although I would say it's not the same as physical sight. Again, that's a little confusing when we describe it in those terms. But if you, if I look at what's happening, when you were talking about, uh, you know, it's, it's, you, you can feel it in your cells. What I saw was uh, there's a spin happening. So you increase the, the field around those cells, both on a, on a big scale with this ball of energy, right? You create an energetic field. Yeah. It was spin, kind of spinning both directions. Right. And the geometry there. And then when you put that in your head, your cells have the opportunity to match that. Mm. So it's, it's, uh, we work primarily through resonance, resonant frequency. So if something's happening, we match it very easily. Yeah. So you gave your body something new to match, and your cells said, hey, that feels better. That's actually more aligned with what I want. Yeah. And then it, it's like you remembered, your cells remembered what, it, what it's like for them to be in a more natural state. And when they remembered, Boom, they did it because it's natural. Yeah. Um, so it's, that's what I mean. It's like we're working at a very deep level. But yeah. once you still remember, then of course, yeah, the electricity changed in it, the chemicals changed, you know, all the physical processes kick in in your body, like you know, a lot happens. That's why you feel excited and enthusiastic too, is you know, all the hormones. Are, so I, that's a perfect question for you then, because we can do these things naturally with our own body, but then there's machines that people have. Like I have one sitting right behind me now. We're talking about resonant frequencies. Like what's your, what's your thought process on that um, in terms of using that for energy healing? Like some people have these machines and sure. we can use the energy ourselves. So what's, where do they kind of meet up? Well, I think, uh, you know, I've played with some of them. I've never got uh, deeply into them, just kind of as part of my own personal interest in research. You know, I, I get feelings from, you know, anybody that's got a new technique or something, I just go try it out. Cause, you know, yeah, same here. Yeah. And um, so the machines can be really helpful because, yeah, you can, you can, a machine can generate a field, you know, a frequency or a field that your body can match. Uh, the... The challenge with a machine, however, is the machine's not intelligent. Mm. And so, uh, you know, like for example, let's say just real simple. Example. Let's say that you know, if you're trying to get to this balance point here, and so, and you're a little bit out of balance, mm -hmm. and you realize, oh, if I play this certain sound, or I, I take this um, certain medicine, or <clears throat> I do some stretching, you know, that moves me toward, you know, it, it changes. Oh, there's something else like a pen. There we go. <laughs> it moves me toward this balance point. Yeah. But then I keep taking the medicine, doing the stretching, doing whatever, and I keep moving, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, the machine can create a, a direction and move you in that direction, but it doesn't have the intelligence to know when to stop moving that direction, like when you got to the, like, the balance point, right? That makes total sense. And so you're going to, so if you're going to use the machine or you're not going to use the machine, either way, you want to, you need to learn to understand, like, oh, now I'm in balance, right? Like, I, I worked out because my muscles were weak and it was causing some challenges. My muscles were too weak for my normal daily life, you know, to feel healthy. But I didn't need to be, you know, I did, then, that was good. But then if you work out to the point where your muscles are so big you can't put your shirt on, <laughs> you know, you know, maybe that was a little out of balance, right? So <laughs> you got to sort of, uh, with anything you're doing, like said, medicine, exercise, energy work, yeah. you know, you have to find the balance, but the machine can't help you with that. Uh, but it can help, it can provide a force and move you in a particular direction. That to makes total sense. So, um, and you might be interested in me talking to the guy that created that. He's a mathematician too, which is interesting. Oh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to meet these people, you know, like you, who's a mathematician, now you're an energy healer. Um, yeah. so, so now we talked about energy. Where would you say people could tap in into their intuition or awareness? Or is there any other techniques that someone can do right now that maybe, um, like, so, say someone's watching this and they're like, I have no intuition, like a lot of people you hear, like, I don't have to intuition, or like, how do they become sure. aware of it? Okay, yeah, so um, for intuition, there's um, a couple things you can do. One is you want to be very curious, right? So you have to, you have to change your mindset from being, wanting to accomplish something and be perfect and successful to just being curious. Because mm -hmm. you're discovering something new and the more curious you are the more enthusiastic you are and the more open you are and the more that you'll discover whereas if you're if you're wanting it to be a certain way you're most likely going to be frustrated that you're not doing it that way mm. and that's that's the first thing with uh, intuition is is be really curious and open and then the the next thing i would say is that uh, a lot of people when they think about intuition they're thinking that it's somewhere outside of them mm. right so like i'm gonna you know maybe an extreme example somebody's like i want to talk to some uh you know spirit that i can contact that's not in a body and you know i talk to an angel or something like this and there's nothing wrong with you know if that's fun for you then great um, but your intuition is not outside of you your intuition is inside you mm. so you need to be really present in your body mm. if you want to use your intuition yeah now, most people are, su are surprisingly uh, not much in their body. Mm. Like I, when I started learning about this, I was learning how to ground and like basically just connect your, imagine your root chakra, and basically your spine's connected into the earth, mm. and that'll help your energy kind of focus. And I, I learned to kind of be right behind my eyes. So I'm like, I'm right, like my presence or awareness or consciousness, whatever is here, and I'm looking outward, mm -hmm. which is a little bit weird. Usually we're sort of just all over the place. Yeah. Um, so when I started doing these things, I realized that it was, that's when I was in that intuition training. Uh, at some point I realized, wow, this is what it feels like. I'm actually in my body. Whoa, I'm having the experience of being fully present in my body. And I like looking at my hands and when I walked, like everything moved like this instead of being, you know, because, you know, I had a gait and, you know, and, and uh, drug, right? That's the, I can't believe it. I think at the time I was maybe 28, I was like, this might be the first time I've ever been in my body. I'm 28 years old. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I just didn't know. I, I was I was in this imaginary world of uh, kind of um, maybe mostly beliefs and a little bit of you know physical things, but most people are kind of in that world. They're in their mental world. Your mental world doesn't have a whole lot of intuition going on. Your yeah. mental world is about filling in the blanks. Right. So your mind's job is to take uh, information, and then when there's a gap, to make a story, to kind of connect the dots. Mm. But it doesn't. Uh, your mind doesn't have it's like this push thing right your mind is that machine it yeah. doesn't actually have the intelligence to give you a story that's true or not true but it can make a story really well <laughs> yeah. 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 so you've got to kind of get out of that space be in the body you can do it right now so you just kind of uh, imagine that being really grounded you know like you can just visualize connecting my root chakra connecting my hips mm -hmm. just kind of down into the earth mm -hmm. people like to feel like a tree trunk or right all and just just really there you go just feel yourself glad and deeply and everybody can do this mm. and then just notice that you know all your energy is back with you behind your eyes mm. you have a you have a place like your here and now is your body mm. yeah people say be here be present in the here and now this is it this is the only part of you that's localized in time and space. Your body is that part. Wow. And so then people are like, boom, you're really coming in. And so from that perspective, you just feel your energy changing. Like for me, I'm like, whoa. Like I can suddenly feel my body a lot more strongly than before. Yep. Some cool sensations. And so from this space, if I ask myself questions, if I, if I say, hmm, of the projects I'm thinking about taking on, now, is, it, is the first one, the second one, or the third one have more energy flow for me? Mm. Or more natural for me? Or more, am I going to be happier? And I don't have to come up with an answer. I just sort of, I just sort of feel. 
I'm going to imagine, I think you can do this for if it's a relationship or a project or uh, some healing thing you want to try. Just everybody is thinking of something you've got a little choice in front of you. Right. Be really present in your body. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of imagine yourself walking down one of those paths, taking one of those choices. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing way to yeah. go about predict, uh, planning out the future. Yeah. It's using yeah. that set that like uh, feeling in your body. Yeah, yeah. And, and then if you back up and then go down another choice right now. Okay. And what you're noticing is just what's different. Mm. Like each one feels a little differently. Yeah, completely. And then so you could, we can all just try, um, maybe just open up a third one, like some possibility I haven't considered. You can move that. So I'm going to kind of feel, what if I go down a road I don't know yet? This is great for me because I got a lot of my projects up going on. So, uh, and then, then you just kind of come back in the present moment and you, you don't have to decide anything, but you have, so you're like, oh, I kind, of, I kind of test drove, you know, like test drove all these things. And that, that one that I was so excited about, I didn't really enjoy it that much. So, you know, I'm just going to put back burner that for the moment. But this other one, uh, that, actually, that felt really fun. So I'm going to do that one now. Yeah. And then um, with intuition, remember, it's always about now. Intuition is what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. So it's not, oh, yeah, it's not right. like, you know, a month later, you might do the same exercise and go, okay, I'm ready to do that first project again. Right. You know, if, if, you're, if you're going where the energy is flowing, it's always really fun. Like right. life is a game. But if you get, you know, if the energy kind of cuts down and there's not much, you know, like, uh, you know, it's like the, you're trying to water your plants, but there's not really much water coming out. You know, you're not going to grow very much. <laughs> yeah. You move over to where the water is, you know, where it's flowing. And that, that brings back to the, the term for me, high on life. Like when you're connected with yourself and you started mm -hmm. talking about these weird feelings, like you almost feel like you're on a drug, but you're just connected with your body, especially if you've been disconnected for so long, which a lot of people are. And then yeah. you get to walk down these paths and feel the future. And um, yeah, it's, that's extremely powerful for me. Just, just doing this now, uh, for the next few seconds, has actually helped me map out a little bit of like where, where I'm planning on going because I got a lot of things going on right now. And so for the listeners, um, what a powerful technique. So you ground yourself, feel that root chakra, connect to the earth, maybe the hips, and then you project out or you connect with yourself on these. Eyes first. What's that? So the second part is be right behind your eyes. Oh, behind your eyes. Okay. Yeah. And then... Once you're behind the eyes, you go down these different paths and you feel what you feel in the body. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's extremely valuable. Yeah, it's, it's great. And then uh, just let any answer be okay. And you can, you can change your mind later. Um, so, I, well, something that a lot of people hit is when, it, when you do this exercise, sometimes people will say, nothing felt good. I didn't get a clear answer. Mm -hmm. so I'm frustrated and maybe, I, maybe I'm not good at this. Yeah. But uh, almost always that's not true. What's true is that you notice that none of those uh, paths that you explored had a much energy flow for you right now. Mm. That's why I like to open up the something else channel. Um, another, another thing that people hit is, um, you know, I'm trying, trying, trying to get an answer to this question. I can't get it, so my intuition must be broken. Mm -hmm. oh, well, maybe the information's not available yet. Right. More will be revealed. Not, not everything's available at all times because sometimes it hasn't been determined yet. You know, there's some factors still in play. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you hit that, and, you know, if anybody that's listening, if you hit that, then just ask yourself a simple question like, well, when would I be able to tune in and, and get an answer? Mm -hmm. Feel good about it. Yeah. Almost always that fixes it. You're like, oh, next week or one month later. Right. Uh, okay, well, if, if for the next month, asking myself this question is going to continue to frustrate me and not give me answers, why don't I not ask that question for the next month? Right. And then ask if there's actually an answer available. That's like, that's super helpful. Yeah. Right? Because it frees up all your energy to do, uh, you know, tune in to things that are available. 
do, do you find that some people are just so disconnected that they're choosing all these paths that are so far from their real being or like true, like who they truly are that sometimes they just have to shift focus completely into another area? Have you ever seen that happen? Uh, it's sometimes, you mean if, um, like if the people start tuning in, they need to make a radical change in life. Yeah. Yeah. Like say like someone's been an accountant their whole life and they have like, you know, these ideas about what accounting firm, but really like their true calling is to like be surfing in Mexico or whatever it might be. And they just keep thinking about this path and it just brings up those bad feelings. Like you say, some people say, oh, I just don't feel good about either option. Yeah, um, sometimes that's true. You know, um, <clears throat> like for me, my experience of being a software engineer for 15 years, and, and I switched, you know, just uh, switched out of that career completely into something new. So sometimes that's the case. But for most people, you're probably in the right place already. And what your challenge is, is to, uh, to bring, in, bring the curiosity and the joy and the fun back, bring in things new things that you're learning into the environment that you're in. Right. So like, it's so say if I'm a, like I could have done that too. I could have said, okay, the reason why my software engineering career is unfulfilling is, um, is because I'm not helping people. Mm. Well, okay. Well, it's not that it's possible to help people in that field. I could have changed a different company or worked with the people in my company. I could have started new conversations. Like I could have infiltrated you know, where I was at with new information and like, yeah. and change it. Yeah. And it brought more light and flow and joy and happiness to the current situation. So a lot of times that's easier than trying to make a whole new career or a whole new situation. That makes but sense. It's, it's kind of up to each person. Um, but sometimes I, a lot of people do the same thing I did where uh, before I changed, I had this dream that maybe I just, I could just cancel this career and do something brand new. Um, but that's, it's actually kind of a, you know, that takes time. Like, that's not going to be an overnight switch. Yeah. <laughs> it takes years and years. Yeah. Don't, don't get stuck on that. Just, you know, keep it open for yourself. Like, a, maybe I'm going to do a big change, but um, maybe I don't need it. Actually, I'll tell you what I, what I did personally was that I, I gave myself a, a time frame so the, that when I decided to make that change, um, I'd actually been... Um, I'd been outside working. We were building an addition to my house with a, with a friend of mine. And so for two weeks, I'd been out in the sun with a hammer and a saw and like, and actually doing physical work. Yeah, feeling good. It was beautiful. I loved it. It was so fun. And then I, I had to go back to my job. Yeah. And, um, and we sat in an interior conference room all day talking about things that didn't matter, pretending they were important. Right. And I just realized, yeah, it is a beautiful sunny day outside. I'm like, I, this is like, I'm kind of wasting my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, it's not other people wasting my time. I'm, I'm wasting my time here. I'm wasting my life. And that's when I decided to change. But I, I also tuned in and said, what's that time frame going to look like? Yeah. About two years is what I got. So I was like, okay, oh, wow. so okay. in the next few years, yeah. I can see a really beautiful natural flow that in two years I won't be doing this anymore. Right. And do I need to take any action today? Nope. I didn't do anything. Yeah. And, that, and it happened. And in two years, uh, that it started coming up. At one point, I was like, oh, wait, wow, this is that year that things were going to shift and nothing's changed. Right. And, but then one by one, boom, huge opportunities started opening up just out of the blue, you know, sort of like, that's when you feel like it's magic. <laughs> it's not, but, um, so that, that's a graceful way to change. You give yourself a time frame. I didn't actually make it happen. I let it happen. Gotcha. So you went with the flow. You had kind of planned it out in your, in your mind and then let the energy kind of take it there. Yeah, I didn't do much. I didn't actually do any planning. I just noticed I need to change. I, I accepted that. I said, uh, yes, I would like that. I would like another career. Awesome. There's that word. <laughs> I, I you, like it. Have to, so you don't have to do all the planning. Yeah. So, so, um, so we talked about intuition. We talked a little bit about awareness. We talked about energy. Um, and what's the other one that we're missing there that you, you had? The oh, other one is uh, mediumship. I don't talk about it much anymore. That's right. Right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd love, love to hear about that. Okay, yeah. So, mediumship, uh, that includes a lot, of, a lot of different abilities kind of in this big category. Okay. Uh, intuition is sort of like sensing energy, right. sensing information. Uh, energy healing, if you call it that, or energy work, is about changing energy. 
right? So I'm gonna like create new flows, return things to balance. I'm gonna take action, right? This is energy and action part. So one is intuition is listening, action is the healing. Uh, mediumship is all things that are about uh, kind of resonating with other things or going into harmony with things. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, and there, there's a little blur over in these areas too. These are all just words, right? So for example, uh, the, the place that most people experience mediumship is in their relationships. Uh, uh, so if, if you feel like you don't have very clear boundaries mm -hmm. with people, like it might be somebody that you're around and before you meet them, you're really clear. You're like, okay, that I know they're going to ask me to do something for them, but really busy. I don't want to do it. So I'm gonna, this time I'm going to be strong. I'm not going to do it. I'm yeah. just going to say it politely, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm busy. And you're, you're, you've got your resolve and then you walk into the room with that person and just say casually ask you, hey, would you mind doing this thing for me? And without any thought, you just say, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> and then you leave and then you're like, why? <laughs> what happened? Why, why did I do that? Yeah. Well, that's because um, that has to do with mediumship, right? And empathy. So their energy field was very coherent and clear. Mm -hmm. And when you went in, uh, you matched that. You just matched that clear signal mm -hmm. that came out. So a nice way to think about it is um, the, best, the best kind of metaphor I can give your analogy would be uh, music. So think about it like you, you, you know, listening now, you, your energy body is like a guitar. Right? Right. So you've got, you've got these strings that play different sounds. Right. And everybody's got a guitar. And if you've ever played the guitar, you know that if you had two guitars and one of them is sit, you're sitting there like plucking on one of the strings, the strings on the other guitars will move too. Yeah. Right? So somebody else can play your guitar literally, that right? Be cool. In your hands and the other person's playing and yours will move. Now, if you're playing your guitar, it won't make much difference. They're not going to influence you very much. Mm -hmm. right? Because you're playing your guitar, it's pretty much going to be your tune. Yeah. But if you're doing anything and somebody else is like a master and they're playing, you better believe your guitar is going to pick it up and it's going to play there too. Wow. And, that's awesome. and that's how energy works too. So it's through a, a resonance, you know, we go into harmony with, with things even if we don't want to. And um, so that's the place most people get. And this includes emotions. A lot of times when, uh, uh, when you're angry or you're sad, people always ask questions like, how am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? What am I feeling? And I would say those questions are not the right questions to ask if you want to get a deeper answer. Yeah. If you're feeling an emotion, the first question you want to ask yourself is, who am I feeling? Right. <laughs> right? Because you're like, oh, I have a guitar. My guitar, my emotions are like a guitar. Who am I feeling? Yeah. And then... Whose energy am I picking up? Right. Half the time, when I do this, half the time, like... Like, I'm like, wow, I just got really angry, like, in this meeting for some reason. And, like, and then I think, oh, wait, who am I feeling? Yeah. Am I feeling me or am I feeling somebody else? Right. Oh, well, now I know which, I know which action to take because if I'm feeling me, then I want to, yeah, I want to process that and understand. I want to do some emotional work mm -hmm. because I can. But if I'm feeling somebody else, I, I want to dissociate from that. Right. And we're not trying to do that. We're all trained to, like, you know, like, oh, we should take care of it as if it's our own. But if you try to do take care of an emotion that's not your own, all you're going to do is be frustrated. Right. Like, because you can't handle it. You can't process that emotion. It's not yours. Yeah. Uh, I heard someone, a, an example of that. I can't remember where I heard it, but uh, which allowed the light bulb to go off my head was when you're driving in a car and someone's riding you be, from behind and yeah. they have that impatient energy, like get out of my way, and then you start getting like irritated and you pick it up. That's kind of the same thing you're talking about, right? Exactly, yeah. And, um, and so for me, I, I play with this kind of stuff all the time. So I love your example, because we were, um, I was driving from Sedona down to Phoenix one time. We've got two friends in my car. And, um, and it's really busy traffic like that, where there's people behind me, in front of me, the yeah. whole house is lined up, and, um, and there's traffic. And, I, and then I remembered, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to be in traffic. Like this is not my desire. So I just, all I did was decided, hey, I want to have a peaceful drive without traffic and stress. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually take any action, right? And then I waited about uh, a couple of minutes. And then I, and then I, I wasn't thinking about it. I just made that choice. 
Right. And then a couple minutes later, I started looking around and I was like, I started laughing. And I told my friends, like, what are you laughing at? I said, well, look around the car, see if you notice anything. And then they looked around and they were like, there's, there's no cars within a quarter mile of us in either direction. We're driving alone on the highway. There's not a single car, but quarter mile in front of us, bumper to bumper traffic. Quarter mile behind us, bumper to bumper traffic. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. And, and some people might listen to this and think that's crazy, but that is the power that we, we harness, right? Yeah, and I didn't do anything. I didn't pick some magic technique and spin up some energy or do anything. All I did was just notice and I chose to play my guitar, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And, and then I didn't even consciously, I didn't even expect a result. Right. It just, it happened and then I was, and then I was laughing. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Look at what happened. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, it, it held for maybe 10 minutes or so until I was distracted by other things. And then it's, you know, kind of like, you know, came back in and I ended up back in the traffic. But you have enough experiences like that and you start noticing, wow, I really can influence my world. Yeah. I can influence the people around me. I can, um, uh, I'm not just uh, kind of a victim of circumstance. That, that's a powerful takeaway for everybody listening to this because this is about healing mastery, right? And so we all might end up in situations that we don't enjoy. And through the techniques that you just gave, even just a few examples, we can actually play with it a little bit and change our lives, right? And, and like you said, you know, change relationships or deepen relationships. Uh, awesome. I know uh, we're almost at the end of the hour here. So I, I would love to just ask you, um, you know, it's Healing Mastery Summit. There's no such thing as a healing hack, I would say, even though you gave us kind of like examples. Is there anything that you would give as a takeaway in terms of like what people can do right now on top of what you just mentioned that would make an impact on their life um, or make them feel like they're moving in the right direction? Sure. Well, there's something that came to mind right away. It's not something I would have thought about it, but since we came up, I'll, I'll mention it. And um, when, you're, when you're learning new things, uh, you want to be... Uh, you want to be open and you want to be kind of gentle with who you're listening to. Mm. So because especially if you're just getting in to intuition, energy work or energy healing, uh, there's people that are, they're not into it, that are very intelligent, uh, very well-spoken uh, people uh, that are likely to tell you that it, it's crazy mm -hmm. or that you're crazy or that you shouldn't do any of these things. Or uh, you might even hear that it's dangerous. Right. Like and and this is okay. So what you want to keep in mind there is that the example I would give is, you know, if, if I'm building a house, to, for that house to totally function, I'm going to need some plumbing and water and I'm going to need some electricity, right? Yeah. But uh, if I ask the electrician about water, what's he going to tell me? He's going to say it's dangerous, man. Don't go near that water. Mm. Because he's an electrician, and electricity and water, you know, not, not so hot together. So he's right. going to say, oh, yeah, you know, I can, I can help you with this electrical part, but don't go near the water. If you talk to the plumber, because they're an expert in water, they're going to say, hey, water, no problem. I understand all about that. And electricity stuff, that's scary. Right. I don't know much about that. And so, um, so just keep that in mind when, when you're getting opinions from other people. Yeah. Um, they're most likely well-intentioned, and they're probably, everybody has their own expertise and intelligence. And when they're speaking from within their experience and expertise, their advice is fantastic, right? Like you, you want to, um, you know, if you have something physical in your body, you want to go to a doctor and get that expertise. That's a, that's a really healthy thing. Yeah. I don't think that you need to do a magic energy technique and, and not need to go to the doctor, right? People want that, <laughs> but you want to do both, right? Yeah. If the doctor tells you don't do any energy thing, you say, okay, well, do you have the, what's your experience with that? Have you trained in that? Oh, okay, they don't have any training there. So I'm going to say, I'm going to listen to what they're trained in. But then if I talk to an energy healer and they say, all oh, medicine is bad and you should never go to the doctor and it's scary, I'm going to say, well, are you a doctor? And like, no, no, I would never go to one. Say, okay, well, they don't have much experience there. So for that part, I'm not going to listen to their advice. But for the energy part they're talking about, they probably have awesome advice. Yeah. So just kind of you know, keep that in mind because everybody has uh, an opinion and is trying to help you, but they can't help you about things they don't know about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you, and, and you need everything like to really enjoy your life. You need, uh, like I said, like if I get sick, you know, I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to do energy healing. 
and I'm gonna and I'm gonna stretch, you know, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm gonna meditate. I'm gonna do everything I can and get all the expert advice, and I'm gonna integrate it together in my own experience. And that, that's what I'd recommend for everybody is to is to do that. You know, enjoy all the modalities, everything that's available. That's a perfect example, uh, and, and that's why I'm speaking with you right now, because what I like to do is go to the best of the best and kind of cut through all of the people. Like, you've been doing this for a long time. You've been doing it for 20 years, and uh, I'm speaking to someone with lots of experience, and for me, that transfers into me. Um, and so the people that are listening right now to this, you're getting some awesome information and really take even just these simple – uh, practices and they can be done daily right they can do some of these things that they want daily times a day with the energy ball of energy and just, uh, right uh, do you recommend how many times or yeah for the energy work um, if you if you got excited about feeling the energy and you want to practice more uh, let your let your internal wisdom guide you so you know keep playing with the energy ball and then one day you might notice oh I'm feeling like I want to do something a little different just do that and see what happens. You're not going to hurt yourself doing energy work. Right? Yeah. You're not going to, so uh, be curious. Uh, follow your own intuition. Try things. Some things will work great. Some things won't work. If you have a partner that you can practice with, you're going to learn so much faster. Because so you can try. When you talk about energy work, are you talking about like Tai Chi, Qi Gong, uh, or, oh, or yeah, sure that or, or energy healing? Just energy um, healing in general. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, anything that involves this sort of uh, you know energy and the, the non uh, non physical, not not uh, not scientifically validated realm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to go through feelings. We don't have a science behind it. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they study the non seen, right, we get more done in a decade than in a century. It was what Nikola Tesla said, right? So yeah. uh, awesome. Any last words before we end here? Anything that you can convey to the listeners? Sure, yeah, I, just, I would just say uh, first, thank you. Thank you for listening and being open. And I just want to remind you, like, you are intuitive. You are a healer. You are a medium. These are natural abilities inside you. You don't need any more training. All you need to do is start uh, playing and having fun and enjoying these abilities. And they're just going to open up and, uh, and blossom in your life. Awesome. Jeffrey Allen, all the way from Japan, how can they get in contact with you? Social media, where can they follow you? What's the best way to get in touch? Yeah, sure. Probably the easiest would be to go to my website. So the website is uh, www.iamjeffreyallen.com. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Facebook. I'd be the same thing, I'm Jeffrey Allen, uh, or Instagram. You can find me in those different places. And but on the website, there's some, uh, there's some free things, too. So just a little, take it a little bit deeper if you want some free stuff on kind of how to start working with energy. Uh, that'll get in there. And then, of course, I've got training programs. If you, you know, you'd see those, we can go like, really deep and really learn. And, uh, but you can, uh, you can do it on your own, too. Like I said, you don't, you don't need the training, but if you want the training, it's a, it's a fantastic way to accelerate your growth. Awesome. So go to the website, pick up the free training. If you enjoy it, then go deeper with Jeffrey Allen and his training. And uh, I really appreciate this. And we're going to be launching this in November. And so uh, thank you again. And uh, we'll let you know when it's on. Great. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jeffrey.